And in earlier um, videos in our series, we derived the Laplace transforms of just uh, some basic functions, the sine of kt, the hyperbolic cosine of kt, the cosine of kt, the hyperbolic cosine of kt, t raised to some exponential power, it's n factorial, divided by s to the n plus 1, or the Laplace transform of e to the minus kt is 1 over s plus k. Uh, so we're assuming that everyone is familiar with these functions here. And they can work backwards with them if you have um, a function in maybe this form that you're going to realize is probably setting you up for a hyperbolic cosine function. And with the symbols that we're using, we have some function f of t and its um, the plus transform is some function f of s. And that those are derived in uh, previous videos. Um, you might point out that the playlist now for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Because what we're going to do in this video and the next several videos is work with this expression. This we derived in the last video. So of course to do that we'll have to be familiar with these expressions here. So let's, and the way to get familiar with this and to understand it is just by working through some problems. So let's consider taking the inverse the plus transform of this function. Say the first term is 3 divided by s, and we have minus 4, say, times e to the minus s divided by s squared. And let's put one more term in, say we have plus let's say 5 times e to the minus 2s divided by s squared. Oh, something we should point out. Um, remember the definition of a Laplace transform. If we have some function f of t the Laplace transform of it is that function f of t times e to the minus st dt. The limits of t are 0 to infinity. Now what happens if um, we take the Laplace transform of f of t just times u of t. Well, again, if we just follow the basic definition, it would be this quantity f of t times u of t e to the minus st dt with these limits like this. But what does this tell us? This tells us u of t is 0 whenever t is less than 0, and after that it's equal to 1. Well, the limits on t are 0 to infinity. So on this integral, this just has a value of 1. So this integral and this one are the same. So the Laplace transform of f of t times u of t is just the same as the Laplace transform of f of t. The Laplace transform of this is just the same as the Laplace transform of this. We just want to be clear about that because we will use that in just a few moments. But let's go back now to our problem.
Okay, well the first term here is 3 over s. The Laplace transform of that, of course, is just 3. We have 3 times 1 over s. And of course, the inverse of the Laplace transform of that is just some constant. It can just be 1. And again, that falls out from that if I take the Laplace transform of t to the n, it is n factorial divided by s to the n plus 1. Well, here, this is 1 x is raised to the exponent 1, so n has to be 0. t to the 0 is just 1. So I just have, we just have 3 times 1. So from the first term, obviously that's just very trivial. That's 3. We can say 3 times u of t. Now, for the rest of it, we have minus 4 over s squared, then we have e to the minus s. Now we have to pay attention to our formula. e to the minus cs, that gives this part of the formula over here. Then here's a Laplace transform of f of s. That's going to correspond to some function f of t, but actually it's going to be f of t minus c. That's the formula. We derived that in the previous video. So we look at here. This is s times minus 1, so c is 1. So here we're going to have minus, and this gives us then u of t minus 1. Then we have 4 over s squared. The Laplace transform is 1 over s squared. Obviously, the function is just going to be t. And again, that just pops right out from our elementary formula, which you're probably very familiar with. But we have to pay attention now. It's not just f of t. It has to be f of t minus c. And for this problem, c is 1. So it's going to be not t, but t minus 1 times 4. 4 coming from here. So have minus 4 t minus 1. And again, let's just make certain now that we're comfortable with this. It's pretty simple. It's just a matter of getting some experience with it. Um, looking here, it's obvious that c is 1. So this indicates u of t minus 1. Then for the 1 over s squared, that's the Laplace transform. That corresponds to the function t. But it has to be f of t minus c. Well, c is 1. So it's this. And of course, times 4. So that's that part of the formula. Now here, we have plus e to the minus 2s. So c now is 2, so we have u of t minus 2 times e to the minus 2s, 5 over s squared. Again, we have 1 over s squared. That's the Laplace transform. The function that corresponds to that is t. And we'll have a 5. But it has to be t minus c. c is 2. So here we have times 5 times t minus 2. So here is the inverse Laplace transform. Right here, 
here is then the function that corresponds to that inverse Laplace transform. Um, notice now we have like three different sections here because when t is greater than zero that's going to be one but these parts here will be zero but then when we get to the point where t equals one now this becomes active because that will no longer be zero it will be one so then this enters into the formula then when t equals two this now becomes one so now that enters into the formula so we have like three different sections here we have to think about if we want to try to make a graph of what this might look like so we have t being less than one but greater than zero then we will have where t is greater than one but less than two and then for here we'll just have where t is greater than two so let's see if we can kind of make a, at least a rough sketch of what this might look like now when we're between zero and one that's zero and that's zero because that's a negative quantity that's a negative quantity so it's just going to be three so zero then we have t1 t2 say maybe t3 between zero and one it's going to be three Let's say this is three so it's going to be like this but now we get to the point this is one two three t this axis is this axis here is f of t now when we get to the point one now this kicks in making this one so then we're going to have three when we get into this zone here we have three minus this 4t minus 1 that'll be minus 4t minus minus 1 is plus 1 plus 4 so this is equal to 7 minus 4 times t so when we get into this part right here between t equal 1 and t equal 2 we now have that formula that we have to work with okay now let's see how this comes out then here we have when t equals 1 7 minus 4 is 3 when t equals 2 then we'll have that will be 8 7 minus 8 is negative 1. Now let's remember when we go from here it was just 3 when we get to here it is 7 minus 4t and when we're at the point 2 we're down here at minus 1 so we're here so it's going to be roughly like this call this minus one then so we have this now we can we're all set here and what happens now then when we go beyond this when we go beyond t equals two now this is going to kick in so now once we get to pass the point where t equals 2 now we have this to consider so well we were up to this point we had this function 7 minus 4t now we have this one that's going to kick in 
because now this is going to be equal to 1, and we're at that point of t equal 2. So we're going to have plus 5t minus 10. So what do we have here? We have 5 minus 4, that's t, 7 minus 10, minus 3. That's going to be it for the remainder of the graph then. When t equals 3, it's going to be 0. So it will be like this, and then just keep increasing. So there's our function. We had to consider it in three different sections, because these will kick in at different points of the graph. And again, for this function that we just kind of crudely sketched, its corresponding Laplace transform is, well, this is the function here, and its Laplace transform is this. Of course, for this video, we started with the Laplace transform. We found the function by using our formula that we derived in the last video, and then with a little bit of thought, we were able to provide a rough sketch of what our function looks like. Okay, um, that's it for this video. Let's see if maybe we can have another workout with this. As you can see, it's pretty simple. Um, it's just a matter of working with some examples.